What's up, fellas? It's time that we have a discussion about that special lady in our lives. It's Dr. Mary E. Walker, and today's Motivated Moments and History! <laughs> Mary Edwards Walker was born in Oswego, New York in 1832. As a child, she bucked the male-dominated and often chauvinistic system. When she finished primary school, instead of dedicating her life to pleasing her husband by making sandwiches and having babies, like all the other women, Mary took on the male-dominated profession of medicine. Now, given the opportunity to become a nurse like a few other women in the medical field, she disregarded that shit and attended college in Syracuse to become a doctor. She started a private medical practice, but it went under quickly because at the time, female doctors weren't really trusted or respected. Well, the Civil War broke out, and she volunteered to become an Army surgeon. Well, the Union Army denied her entry because she wasn't a male. She offered to do it as a civilian instead, but, you know, she was denied again. Then she offered to do it for free, but was still denied because she was a woman. You know, and finally, after pleading her case to the officers of the Union Army, she made him understand that it was borderline ass clownery for them to deny the aid of a competent surgeon to their force. So they reluctantly agreed and let her in, but with provision that she received no pay and had to wear men's clothing to appear as a man and could not be officially considered a soldier. Well, she jumped at that chance, dirtied up her appearance, and headed out onto the battlefield and begun slaying some motherfucking bodies! I'm lying. She didn't kill no one. She was a freaking doctor. <laughs> freaking dumbass. She was given a title of Combat Acting Assistant Surgeon, which was a civilian role, and assigned to aid uh, the 52nd Ohio Infantry. Uh, she was captured by the Confederate Army along with other Union troops, and when the rebels found out they had a woman as a prisoner, they offered to free her, but she refused and begun to work as a surgeon providing much-needed support to her fellow male prisoners. The Confederates then told her she had to wear a dress to appear more feminine, despite her role as a POW. She told them to tongue punch her fart box that she ain't gonna do shit other than wear pants, save people, and drive on as a motherfucking rock soul disease fighting super duper Dr. Badass! She spent four months in a POW camp, you know, for her dedication and loyalty to her fellow soldiers, you know, despite the harsh conditions of the camp and being able to be free at any moment. In staying, she was awarded the Medal of Honor by President Andrew Johnson. Now, back then, the military didn't really have that many types of medals, you know, and a lot of soldiers got Medals of Honor for acts other than heroism. Like, dudes got the award for, like, shit like leading a parade, giving a brief, or scoring 197 on a freaking PT test. So, in 1917, the DOD decided to legitimize the medal and rescinded all the medals that were given out in the past which did not live up to its new, more clearly defined meaning. So, and in doing this, they deleted 911 medals and ordered the recipients of the now bogus award to include Mary to give them back. Well, Mary said, fuck no, and she made sure to wear that medal every day of her life until her death in 1919. Well, in 1977, after a petition, the Pentagon realized that they were on some of that dumb shit by not recognizing Mary's service, so uh, President Carter at the time posthumously reinstated her award, validating her as the only woman to ever earn the Medal of Honor. She was buried at a rural cemetery in Oswego, New York, and that, kids, is your motivated moments and history. Thank <laughs> you.